Hello guys and welcome to the um, Faster Than Light gameplay. And we are keeping the screen setting, so let's see what we get here. Now this is a fantastic game and it um, <coughs> belongs to a genre and a universe that I'm really really a big fan of. And it's the roguelikes. The, the games that aren't really meant to be beaten, but you're supposed to meet and face great challenges and see how far you can get. Sort of like a real adventure. And I've been playing these kind of games back since 1992, somewhere when they started cropping up. Back then they were just ASCII graphics and there was not really that much to be going on. But let's have a look at this one, and I know that a lot of you people have played this already, you own it, but... There are still a few people out there not really knowing exactly what this game is. So I'm going to introduce it and let's have a look here. So let's create a new game here. And the first thing you end up with is the place where you get to name your ship and deck your ship out. This game is also... Um, actually, I've got to name it Viper Star. It's a good name for, um, for a ship. Now... The further along you get in this game, the more you unlock lists and achievements and you get different ships, as you can see here. So you need to do various things because you get different loadouts, so you get the different starting points and some make certain parts of the game really, really easy. Now, this is the advanced edition and I played the original edition previously when it was a really, really early beta setup. And I got quite far, but then it lapsed into memory and I played a lot of other games like you tend to do, especially if you're putting gameplay videos up on YouTube like I do, you tend to play around with quite a few games and see what is interesting and what isn't. But it's time to have a look at this because I'm tending on breaking into another space related game that will be coming up soon. And it's sort of a roguelike, but it's not really roguelike. Well, I keep rambling too much, so let's get going with this. This is a um, Human Federation thing, and because I did that, I lost the naming of my ship. So, Viper Star, boom, there we have it. We have a little bit of a crew, we have burst lasers and weapons. This is the crew. And depending on what type of ship you have, you get different things going. Now, let's enable the advanced edition content. So. Difficulty rating is, despite what many games have today, exactly what it says. Easy is easy. Normal is, oh, this is a challenge and hard. Well, you will, <laughs> you will enjoy the challenge of your life. So, we'll head, head out on for normal and get going with this. This looks good. So, for those of you that haven't played this game, you are a rebel ship trying to... Um, get away from your pursuers. They, you apparently have some vital information about their big, mean mothership something, and you need to deliver it in time because you're being chased down, and then you need to confront it. And it's a chase that is really, really intense. Despite the game being turn-based, you do feel that you're a little bit under pressure. So let's see what we have here. We have our crew, and they have changed a bit so you used to have your crew just gather around the captain's quarters and then you had to spread them out but in this instance they seem to have already allocated their spaces if you mouse over your crew here you can see that they have different points so you can see that they have various icons reminiscent of the rooms in on your spaceship and that obviously indicates the level of skills and the further remain in that room during the need of this room the greater the skill it becomes. So the captain sitting in the captain's chair will increase his skills over time. The same with the guy in the uh, uh, weapons room, which is Johnson. And John is the guy taking care of it, the engine room, responsible for dodging, etc. Now, the, there are only a few rooms that will give you certain uh, skill ups. And that is the engine room, the weapon room, the shield room, and the captain's room, well, the pilot seat. The other two is repairing and fighting. So it's weapons and melee combat. And certain races are a little bit better on it and 
but you will see as we go along. Let's have a look here. We have the ship good and ready to go. We have three energy units left, and this is where you build up your energy base so you can distribute certain uh, power to certain sections. So let's fuel up the weapons, and they're good and active, and you see they start to charge, and this is where part of the game difficult comes in, is that you need to be able to charge and get these things going really, really easy and time your attacks properly. So let's head on out. We need to flee from the evil federation. And I think we'll go down here because you would like to have a collection of as many points as possible. The nebulas are offering a different challenge as opposed to open space. And this is the same. You can have nebulas, you can have firestorms, and you can have meteoroid storm and asteroid belt. So you'll see it as we go along. So, let's head on. This is featured by the jump drive, and here we end up into an asteroid belt. Well, asteroid field, and we have a pirate scout that is apparently hostile. And we're going to face a challenge here. The rocks here are obviously bouncing around, so they will on occasion bounce into the ship, hurting and damage uh, our ship, but it will be the same for them. So, our first objective would be to hit the shield. So if we lower his shield, we should be able to um, make sure that we can win. All right, we apparently hit them really, really hard. We'll get two missiles and one, what is that? That's actually, yeah, it's drone control and then nine cogwheels. I have really no idea what nine cogwheels is, but I would assume it's some kind of fuel area. So let's accept this. No longer fighting, so we're slowly charging up the uh, drive. And unfortunately, we're having fires already. Let's go do this. We've had a little bit of tough trouble here. <laughs> this is not good. And this is what makes the game quite dangerous. And. Um, Whew, this is not good at all. Do I have enough to control? Yep, I do. So let's starve this stuff by dragging all the oxygen out. So I'm actually going to open that one as well and drain the oxygen. This is one of the smoothest way you can make sure that you starve out fires on board and making sure that they can't uh, spread. Unfortunately, if there's no oxygen, your crew cannot be um, be using the areas. So let's see here. Uh, there you go, one fire and two fire, and there we go. Whew. That's a bit intense. And let's wait a little bit so we can send the people back. They're fully healed up, and I think Johnson may have been... Yeah. And there we go, Justin. John was the engine room guy. And then we send the captain up front, and he needs to repair, and so, good start. A little bit troublesome start, but it's kind of a good start to get a little bit of the repair going and everything, because the more you skill up, the faster repairs is, and when you really have a hectic battle, it's good that your crew is up and ready, good to go. The FTL drive is also only charging when you have people managing the right positions. So, let's jump on, and we didn't get too much from that, so we need to find some credits. Let's go to this location and see what happens. So, you get to see a little bit what happens. Alright, so, you arrive at the beacon located in the civilian star system. A nearby colony contacts you and saying, We got a rogue rebel ship harassing this system. Do you have time to find it? Well, uh, seeing as we're not being in a very stressful place, this moment, this quest could be something we accept. So, after far too long spent searching, you're finally able to track him down. You go into the fight, pondering just how much ahead of the sun you lost from it. So, we lost one. Well, the fleet pursuing me is having double speed for the next jump. So, that could cause some trouble in the future. 
All right, so we're back into the battle, and obviously we locate where the shield is, because this is something that can be quite critical. Depending on the loadout of certain ships, you may want to target different key areas. And of course, your own weapon loadout has a certain kind of impact on how you can defeat your opponents. So let's get going. We target both weapons on the shield, hoping that that locks down. And then we will disable either the weapon. There we go. Very good. So let's lock out the weapons as soon as we can. Oh, that's no good. It's trying to power up this, but we are pretty much the same. Let's see, we got, whoa! Victor is mine. Well, the question is, this is a rebel scum, so let's not accept his um, surrender there. Uh, never give up, never surrender. So, there we go. And we got a little bit more. They, they, it could be that they sometimes offer more when they are surrendering than when you blow up the ship. So you can sometimes have a more profitable bit when you destroy the ship or not. It's, it's a bit random and that's what I like with games like these. Everything is very much random. There is no one certain guarantee, no one specific set of an outcome. Ah, that's no good. Get in there and repair it, my friend, before the oxygen goes away. Okay, so if you stand there and wait, and you are full, so let's get two, you two in there. Whew. Difficulty is definitely challenging this time. So, John is engine room. So let's send him to engine room. It's kind of difficult to keep track of who is who here. Especially in the beginning before they start getting more distinct experience level. So let's see here. We have Justin is captain and Johnson is the weapons officer. So we have everything sorted. We have, ah, there you go. Scrap is what the circle means. I'm so blind sometimes I forgot what this game is all about. Right, we have a double jump, so I'm thinking we're going to jump to the store directly, just to get away, because we were told that they had double speed for one turn. Alright, the space station here is a traveling merchant, so finally gets to do some shopping, which can sometimes be good. We have fuel, missiles, and drone controls, which are really, really good. So, fleet recharge. Let's see what we can buy here. Emergency respirators, hmm. mind control, this is something I heard that belongs to the more new bitch so you can take over the enemies and cause all kinds of nasty damage on their ships. I do not think we have that much money so we can't really do many things. Hmm. Alright, uh, let's fix the ship up. And that was pretty much it, that was a little bit embarrassing. 22 scrap, so let's continue and move on. Alright, we have the stress call over here. Obviously we are the good guys. Well, this time we're the good guys. So we're gonna help and see what we can do. Wow. So sending the crew over puts them at risk. So they might actually die if they are not being careful. So sending the crew over to help and giant alien spiders are no joke well let's see how many of our people die your crew slowly creeps up on the cluster of creatures from behind without warning the giant arachnids turns and charge however your team stays in control and before long you've beaten them back Woo! -hoo. all of us have survived it's a good crew i got on this one and we get a nice little exchange so a little bit more fuel and needed stuff. Oh, that's quite good. Right, let's see, we have everything we need. And it's soon time to start upgrading the ship, we'll start thinking about that. Let's head toward the exit, so we don't have to worry too much. You see that big red shield moving slowly forward, that's the enemy fleet. If you're within that shield you will only encounter the boring rebel ships, they give very very little value and you really need to get out of there as soon as possible 
to be able to afford to maintain and pay for your ship. So, um, we have absolutely nothing. We found an empty spot. That's no fun. Well, let's make the zigzag pattern here and hope that we get some more money because I would like to have a little bit more stuff. Alright, so explore the asteroid shield. So, three missiles and 13 scraps. And we didn't even take damage. That's brilliant. I don't think we can buy anything though. Right, transmission for nearby, offering trading. So we had the drones. Oh, we have two pages here. Fires, blast of debris, cross a random area, doing up to three damage. Good at taking down shields, but hard to aim. That's a bit tough. Laser charger. Takes a lot of power, but it hits hard. Oh, it's looking good. It's quick to fire as well, but it takes a lot of power. That's a little bit tough. So, let's see here. What do we have that we need? We have a fair amount of missiles at the moment. We don't really need to spend too much money. We had nothing to sell, unfortunately. If you click on the ship button, you get in on your ship, so you can see upgrades, crews, and the equipment you currently have. So, we have the crew that we need, and we need to upgrade something. The biggest thing to begin with upgrading is obviously your reactor, where all the good stuff is, well, being powered from. So, let's add one extra, and, well, let's add two extra, which means that if we do accept, then you see that on the engines there was one blank here so we add some more and we can keep that in reserve for the future now i've seen various configurations where people drag down these and they disable like medic stuff during combat in order to boost other resources you can do that if you're good at managing but it is a resource balance game this beyond being just a survive as long as you can game well Let's head toward the exit and get rid of these guys. Hopefully shake them away for a little while. So, long range beacon, the FTL drive charge, you can jump to the next sector. As you arrive, you receive a Federation encrypted message. The rebel ship has been terrorizing. Um, yeah, right, we're the good guys, as I said. And here we have a ship, it's a rebel disruptor. They seem to have a hacking terminal, which is one of the new things. And I'm not sure how that works, really. But let's go for the usual. Let's kill the shield. So, weapons fire. And unfortunately, there's the drone control, but might actually shoot down my incoming missiles. That's no good. No, that worked quite well. So, let's do this. Uh, we need to have the engine room guy to run to the shields because really destroyed it. It was no good. Wow, that was a quick and easy battle, but the shields took were taken out really quickly. Ship explode, leaving behind a substantial... Yeah, I enjoy that. So, let's get you in there. Whenever possible, take as much crew that you can to get to the repair functions, because it doesn't matter what item you repair, the repair skill goes up, and it is later on useful for the rooms they are uh, mainly assigned to. Alright. So, we have the ability to jump to the next sector. And where would we like to go? To the Mantis or an abandoned sector? Let's see what the Mantis people can do for us. You've entered an area, a poorly charted area of space that is known to be home to the Mantis. Ensure your whole plating is up to scratch and that you have enough fuel to make it through. Sounds like they're not exactly the most hospitable of creatures. And we'll obviously first we end up with a double distress. Um, choices, choices. If I do that, and then we can jump down and take this route. This is something that is new now, so you can actually see that you can jump to the next sector, because you see here, this distance is too far to jump. 
that is something that used to happen a lot early in the previous versions of the game that you miscalculated exactly how far the distance was so you couldn't jump and then you had to go back into the rebel field and go all the way around <laughs> provided that there's a lot of challenge that bit um but i think we're gonna take a central path this time so let's go up for this one let's see what this world has to offer us okay so let well i said i'm gonna play the good guy so they're getting the fuel you give them the fuel, continue. Thank you so much. Don't much to offer, but have a look at the sector scans we took. Your map is updated. Thank you so much. So, we see distress, distress, and... Ta-da! On this, a possible ship detected. And this is usually a good thing. The empty, undiscovered locations can contain something, but you're never uh, guaranteed to have something. So if you're fighting a ship, you know you will have some loot. And at the moment I have 14 scraps and there's a store here. And I would hopefully like to have something so that I can buy and get some upgrades by that time. So let's head in for battle. So Rebel Disruptor, found you at last. Get prepared to die. Uh, I don't think so. I shall conquer you. Famous last words, my friend. So... I'm not sure what type of drone that is. Hopefully it's not going to shoot down my missile. Oh yes, it was. So let's do the shield disruptions as usual. And discard the engine to repair that. And let's take the drone out. And hopefully a missile could be helped if we take the drone out quickly. Hurry, hurry. There we go. Boom, boom. And we go weapons down with the missile. They're trying to flee, the cowards. Oh, not the missile. Uh, so, there we go. No need of wasting missiles. Now, this is something. Be very mindful of the resources you expend because missiles is a finite resource whilst your laser guns are not. So there's no point in wasting missiles unless you absolutely have to. In this case, I knew the weapons was down, the shield was down, so I wouldn't take any further damage and can afford to wait using only lasers rather than killing them quickly. Well, we did get a little bit of resources, so we got one fuel, which is good, so we didn't waste too much there. And here comes the rebel fleet, well, the Alliance, the Federation, whoever they are, the, the mean and evil Right, um, let's hope for a little bit more coins because I'm feeling desperate in need of what is it? You detect and retrieve an escape pod from floating nearby. You consider returning it to space when you learn its mantis. Escape pod usually means that people have ended up in trouble. So let's help these guys. Pry it open. Oh there. The man is inside is furious. He cuts the cones from the prison half. I've lost my captain. All right, so we are in for battle. Mantis do a lot of high damage up front. So this is no good. I'm infuriated. I lost my captain. No. I was, to be perfectly honest, hoping that there was going to be a little bit of good fortune that you have some time. And good fortune, I mean, that the Mantis might actually have joined this crew. Which would have meant I would have had a perfect guy to be putting in the shield control room, operating the shields, and be able to run around and fight off invaders, because he would be close to the healing place. So, Johnson, you're quite good with weapons and repairing, so I'm going to use you there. John, engines and repairing. Well, you are going to be captain for the time being. Because we need someone in the captain's seat, otherwise we cannot travel. Well, that was a bit of a disaster. Let's see if we can't help the guys out that have a distress beacon up. Oh, there we jam him. It is, but it's okay. Now, if I'm really unlucky, he will kill another of my crew. And I will have one. It's not that easy to run a ship with just one crew member. Oh, I lost John. <laughs> so. I am in trouble. 
to say the very least. I didn't even get a refund. Let's see what the store has to offer. Hopefully I can do something to gain new crew members, but I am not <laughs> having high hopes. Uh, merchants are not so highly respected here. Oh, so they're a bit grumpy. Let's see what they have. Well, we did have... And here you see, as I said, the Mantis are a little bit decent on doing uh, combat damage. Whilst the um, Nikos, well, Nikos is an NG and his repair speed is double, so he's quite useful to have as a repair. But regrettably, we don't have enough coins to afford that. I could sell one of my weapons, but that would mean that I would lose significant attacking advantage. And if I'm selling the Artemis, which is the missile launcher, and I'm ending up with someone with a too powerful of a shield, my burst laser will not be able to cut through it. And vice versa, if I'm meeting something that can shoot down missiles and I keep the Artemis only, choices, choices. This is what I really love about this game. I know I'm in a very, very tricky position, but let's face it, my ship is almost completely repaired. I have decent amount of scrap metal. I need a little bit more to be able to do something really good. Fuel is lasting for at least nine more jumps. I have six missiles. I have eight drone controls, even though I don't have any drones, so I can't really do anything. I could do some more upgrading if needed. And I would actually put something in shields, but it's not doing that because I need 50 to get to the second shield barrier, as you can see on the right hand side. Well, 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 no, we're not doing anything. We're jumping on. Let's see what we can do. Let's go for the empty path and hope that we get resources on the way. Uh, unusually well armed NG ship destroying a small pirate craft. The teleporter signal is detected. Oh dear, one on one fight. A young mantis is charred uniform teleported back on the deck. He begs for sanctuary from the NG, offers to serve in exchange for your protection. The NG have already traced the teleporter signal and are offering a deal in exchange for a prisoner. Well, I need crew, but I also need money, and we're heading toward a store. I know the future path is safe, so I am going to give him up. I would assume that seeing as this is Manti's home space, that the NG are the bad guys. But you never know. I'm giving him up, so I'm selecting two. Wow, we got what, exactly what I needed. And that's... I'm not petty like that, but it's a bit of revenge for the first mantis killing off my captain. I wasn't pleased by that at all. Uh, seeing that as empty, I'm gonna go that first. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. You find an abandoned mining station nearby moon. Quick scan shows no life forms. However, you discover a usable drone schematic. So 11 and a combat drone Mark 1. Not exactly sure what that one does. So let's investigate the ship, crew equipment. Combat drone attacks the enemy ship. So basically it will spin around and shoot some... Uh, ah, I don't even have a drone system, so can't really do anything. Otherwise that would have been quite cool to have that one, because it would have been a little bit extra. Although I have a feeling that drone system and everything would require a little bit too much power, and I don't have that at the moment. Right, let's move on and see what we can get. Alternatively, we can always sell the drone bits. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. What is it with these? Oh, two of them even. This is not even fair. Let's damage them a little bit. Oh, they're gonna... They're gonna really hurt me. Wow. <laughs> so, they got the O2. Let's do this if we can. Let's drown these bastards out. Let's empty the... Oh, all the way. <laughs> wow, I'm not really sure what I can do. 
this is going to take quite some time to... Oh, I'm actually going to keep the oxygen in here, but that's not really going to help. I believe, actually, this might be it. This might be the end for... for yep. Damage is too high, I have no oxygen. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. This is Fossil and Lights, and this is just normal mode. And you saw I was doing everything I could. And a score of 445 for playing it for the first time since... Oh, I don't know. Probably been six months since I played it last. This is a game I really recommend, and you can find it on store, uh, on the Steam store. So just go and grab your copy. It's... Um, I'm hoping that this company will come out with more games like this, because this is a, such a fantastic and cool genre. Anyway, my name is Viper Bane. You can hit like, subscribe, comment, and give feedbacks. I love hearing what you guys have to say. So feel free to contact me. And until next time, peace out.